So when I explain the federal deficit, I like to do it with desserts. But you don't? Now, metaphorically, let's say red ink is calories. The more calories you eat, the more weight you'll gain, and the less healthy you'll be. So while you can safely indulge in, say, oh, I don't know, this one little cupcake. <laughs> it's just, uh, Rachel, you missed, you picked a bad week to be on a vacation. While you can eat a little cupcake, you want to make sure you don't go hog wild and die face first into the entire luscious chocolate cake. Excuse me while I... Uh, good? All right. Now, there was a time when our country was practically ready for skinny jeans. President Clinton handed President Bush a $128 billion surplus in 2001. And President Bush went right for the chocolate cake. The growing surplus exists because taxes are too high and government is charging more than it needs. The people of America have been overcharged. And on their behalf, I'm here asking for a refund. And then another serving, cake for breakfast, President Bush offered the wealthiest taxpayers big breaks in 2001 and 2003. Sitting on a healthy surplus, America cheated on its diet. I mean, they've been so good for so long, right? Now, the budget reconciliation rules by which Congress passed the tax cuts meant that those cuts would have to expire in 2010. The cuts added tens of billions to the deficit right away. That's the blue part of this graph. Under budget, re budget reconciliation, you're only allowed to do that for a 10-year period. So Congress back then essentially locked Congress now into making a choice about whether to keep the tax cuts, which expire at the end of this year. And the way it's set up, a decision to let those tax cuts go away looks like a tax hike, which of course is dangerous ground for lawmakers in an election year like this. Problem is, America isn't in its skinny jeans anymore. So you'd think that the deficit hawks would want to cut back on the cake, right? No, hardly. Republicans are acting like the same tax cuts for the rich that drove us back into deficit spending are now the only way to avoid wrecking the economy. But the other thing is Republicans believe uh, that tax cuts create more money, create more wealth. You hit small businesses with these kinds of tax rate increases and you'll slow down the economy further. Look, 75 percent of those who will get hit with these higher tax rates are successful small businesses. The reality is 50 percent of those uh, affected by the tax hikes are small business people. They're the ones creating the jobs. So we've got to set the rhetoric aside and I think all commit ourselves to help small business. 75%, 50%, more, some, any. This is a bipartisan pig out, I should note. Some quote, unquote, fiscally conservative Democrats are lining up with the Republicans to have their proverbial cake and metaphorically eat it too, like Senator Evan Bayh of Indiana. We don't need to raise taxes now. Eric is exactly right. Whatever the Bush tax cuts cost us later, if they get extended now, will be larded directly onto the federal deficit. And these same self-styled deficit hawks, fiscal conservatives who would fashion themselves as economic nutritionists, are calling for just that outcome. Some icing for you, Senator King Conrad? He says, we know that very soon we got to pivot and focus on the deficit, but it probably is too soon to cut spending or raise taxes. Senator Ben Nelson, whose office says he supports extending the expiring tax cuts, at least until the economy is clearly recovering and supports addressing them before the fall elections. Take a step back from the dessert table for a moment, if you can. The Center on Budget and Policy Priorities recently looked at the real costs of renewing the Bush tax cuts. See the darker orange mass? That represents the Bush tax cuts. Right now in 2010, their impact on the deficit isn't as big as the overall economic downturn or even recovery measures. But watch as we get closer to the end of this decade. If Obama gets his way and the middle class keeps its tax cuts, it would save $700 billion over the next 10 years. But if he doesn't, keeping all the tax cuts is projected to add another $2 trillion to the deficit. $2 trillion is a lot of cake, people. And they want the country to keep eating every day, all day, forever. And at the same time, these same advocates of indulgence for the wealthy recipients of Bush-era gluttony are talking day and night about how all those folks on Social Security and unemployment need to get themselves on a diet pronto. But if it's serious about cutting calories, Congress has an exceedingly easy decision ahead of it. They can maintain lower tax cuts for the middle class, throw out the big frosted calorie cluster bomb that is the entirety of the Bush tax cuts. It's a simple test, really. So any politician who wants to deliver lectures about the need to put the country on a fiscal diet, make sure they don't have any chocolate cake in their teeth. That does it for us tonight. I'm Chris Hazen for Rachel. Countdown starts now.